previous videos, we looked at how to calculate the empirical formula of a compound. You need to watch those videos first, right now, before you watch this video on how to work out the molecular formula. Because in grade 10, 11, and 12, quantitative aspects of chemical change or stoichiometry, we generally go from working out the empirical formula first to then working out the molecular formula. So watch those videos, link down below, then come back to this video. Let's jump right in. As a super quick recap, the empirical formula is the simplest whole number ratio of atoms in a compound. So how I remember it is the word empirical has two I's in it and the word simple or simplest has an I in it. The molecular formula is not the simplest version of the compound. So this is generally how we do these calculations. So you'll be given a percentage composition. You use that information to calculate empirical formula, which I've done in previous videos. I've gone through all the steps, so go watch those videos. You get the empirical formula, which is the simplest ratio of the compound. So two to three. See, you cannot simplify two to three anymore. And then the molecular formula is not the simplest version. So how do we get from two, C2, to C4? You multiply by two. So if you multiply the carbons by two, you have to multiply the hydrogens by two. So the molecular formula is not the simplest version. As you can see, to get from empirical to molecular, we multiplied by two, so N is two. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to go from empirical to molecular. If I want to go from molecular to empirical, we need to divide by the biggest number that can go into each of these, essentially the highest common factor. We get C2H5. That's the simplest. So to go from molecular to empirical, we divide by N. I'll tell you what N is in a second. If we're going to make it more simple, we divide. If we're going the other way though, we need to multiply by n. We calculate n by taking the molecular mass, this is often given in the question, and dividing it by the empirical mass. Now, how do we get the empirical mass? Well, the empirical mass comes from the empirical formula. I hope that makes sense. The empirical formula. So so let's pretend we worked out n and n is 3. You know your empirical formula in this example is C2H5. That's your simplest formula. If I now ask you to work out what the molecular formula is, all you need to do is you need to multiply each of these numbers by n. So we go 2 times 3 is 6, so C6, and 5 times 3, which is 15 that then becomes your molecular formula. So here's your steps for working out the molecular formula. And these steps, as I've written here, and the example, that one example that I will be doing, you will see that this comes from my study guide, which I have for sale on my website. You can purchase it. I have 50 worked examples, like the one I'm about to do with you now. I do all the theory. I break it down into steps for all of the subtopics under the quantitative aspects of chemical change. So go check it out on my website. I'll link it down below. So here's my steps. First, we calculate the empirical mass by determining the mass of the empirical formula. So actually, step number one before any of this is to work out the empirical formula. And that, as I've mentioned, I've covered in two separate videos. Work out empirical formula, so go watch those if you haven't yet. Once you have the empirical formula, you work out the empirical mass. Then you work out N, as I've given you the formula for N over here. Then you multiply the number of atoms in order to get the molecular formula, like I showed you over here. So this first example is going to be a very basic, straightforward first example. In this example, I have already given you the empirical formula. So it says a certain compound has an empirical formula of CH. If they don't give you the empirical formula, you first need to work out the empirical formula. Then they give me the molar mass of the compound and they want the molecular formula. So in order to go from empirical formula to molecular formula, we need to multiply the empirical formula. This is C, H. There are invisible ones over here. So it's C1, H1. We need to multiply these ones by N. But how do we work out N again? 
using the molar mass or the molecular mass in this question there it is the molar mass the molecular mass divided by the empirical mass and I always tell my class this is how I remember this this formula for n that is not given on your formula sheet it's something that we make up just to help us remember how to get n it's not given on your formula sheet so how I remember it is m e it spells out me m over e molecular mass divided by empirical mass so as I mentioned to you the molecular mass is given already in the question it is 78 comma 1 1 how do you get the empirical mass you need to use the empirical formula so it is the mass of carbon plus the mass of hydrogen the mass of carbon is 12 the mass of hydrogen is 1 so it is 12 plus 1 which is 13 so I get 6 my calculator says 6 comma 0 0 8 that is close enough to 6 for me to round it off to 6 I need to multiply the empirical formula by 6 so it was C1 H1 therefore the molecular formula will be C6 H6 I hope that makes sense easy example Let's do a more difficult example, and it contains 84.2% carbon, 15.8% hydrogen by mass. Now, if you read that carefully, what this is giving you, this is the percentage composition. If you read the question further, they give you the relative molecular mass. Remember, when you calculate N, the molecular mass is the thing that goes on top of the fraction, molecular mass, and I did tell you it's usually given so again in this question you can see that the molecular mass is given that is when you calculate n that's the top of the fraction determine the molecular formula now remember what I mentioned earlier on in this video if you are given percentage composition you need to go from percentage composition first get the empirical formula then you need to work out n and you need to multiply by n so First things first, in this video, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to work out the empirical formula. So what you're going to see me doing now is I'm going to be applying steps that I've actually gone through in another video. So I'm going to be going through it relatively quickly. If you need more help on how to go from percentage composition to empirical formula, please watch my videos on empirical formula. So first things first, when you get the empirical formula, you will be given percentages and that is basically your mass. So we've got 84.2 grams of carbon and we've got 15.8 grams of hydrogen these things must be converted to moles you're going to do it using this formula so I'm going to write my formula first I'm going to do it for carbon 84.2 is your mass of carbon your molar mass of carbon is 12 that's for carbon and we get 7 comma 0 1 6 6 6 6 6 moles I'm not rounding off because I'm not at the end of my question then I do the same thing I need to convert to moles for hydrogen so it's going to be 15.8 divided by 1 hydrogen has a atomic mass number of 1 now please don't get confused I know hydrogen is a diatomic element but in this case it's within a compound so we do not multiply the hydrogen by 2 it's just one just 15 comma 8 moles then what you do put it in a ratio then what you need to do is you need to divide both sides of the ratio by the smallest number we comparing 15 comma 8 to 7 obviously 7 is smaller so I need to divide both sides of this ratio by 7 comma 0 1 6 6 6 6 6 6 so obviously on the left hand side I'm going to get 1 on the right hand side I get quite an awkward number. It is 2 comma 2 5. Actually it carries on after the comma but I'm more interested in the first two decimals after the comma. 2 comma 2 5 but let's just write at least five decimal places. 1 7 8. That's fine. Okay now this I cannot round down to 2. It's too high. So if it was 1 to 2 comma 0 1 that would be fine to me to say okay I'm going to say it's one to two because that is close enough to two for me to round down but as soon as I get higher than that so I've got one 
to 2 comma 2 5. I can't round that down to 2. In my video for empirical formula, I speak about what happens if you have something like this after the comma. If you have 0.25, you need to multiply both sides of the fraction by 4. 0.25 is a quarter. The reciprocal of a quarter is 4. So we need to multiply both sides of the fraction by 4 to get rid of the decimal. So we times this side by 4, we times this side by 4. So we will get 4 on the left-hand side. And if we times the right-hand side by 4, we get 9. What this means, remember, the left side of my ratio was for carbon. It means that there's 4 carbons. The right side of my ratio is hydrogens. It means there's 9 hydrogens. This is therefore my empirical formula. What I've done so far is I went from composition, percentage composition, and I worked out the empirical formula, which is C4H9. I now need to determine what N is. I need to multiply this by N in order to get the molecular formula. N needs the molecular mass, which I was given in the question. Relative molecular mass is 114 divided by the empirical mass. Now, how do you get the empirical mass? You need the empirical formula, which is that, and then you use your periodic table. So C4H9, four carbons. Each carbon has a mass of 12. Plus, each hydrogen has a mass of 1. So it is 1 times 9. 57 grams per mole. If I do that, 114 divided by 57, I get 2. To go from empirical formula to molecular formula, I need to multiply by N, which means I need to multiply by 2. So this number, I need to multiply by 2. So it's C8, 4 times 2. This number, I need to multiply by 2, H18. That is my molecular formula. We often ask the question just like this in your exam, and you just need to know. You first need to find that empirical formula, then once you have that, you can then get to the molecular formula. I hope this video has been helpful. Remember to check out the rest of the playlist for all the subtopics under the quantitative aspects of chemical change. I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye, everyone.